Good evening everybody and once again welcome back to the video. In this video we are going to learn about Apache Flink. We will learn how to install the Python library Apache Flink on your local machine and then we are going to explore the table API in Apache Flink in detail. So let's get started. Step one, we need to install Python 3.8 so we're going to create a virtual environment using conda create minus n for new and we're going to name this virtual environment my Flink environment and then we're going to say pip Python 3.8. So let's put this command on the terminal. And this is going to create the virtual environment. So let's wait for this to complete. Now that the virtual env has been created, let's verify by using the following command conda info hyphen hyphen envs. And by, uh, by, by uh, pasting this command, you should see your uh, virtual environment over here. As you can see, I can see mine. Now we can activate the virtual environment by using the word conda activate my flink environment. So we can put this one here and here you can see uh, the environment has now been activated. Now let's install. Now remember Python 3.8 is very important. The newer version of Python, I had trouble and a hard time um, getting it to work. So I'm gonna be using Python 3.8. After that, simply put uh, pip install Apache Flink. So Let's paste that command and this will take a while. So let me resume the video once this is complete. All right, as you can see, the Apache Flink Python library has been installed. Now we're going to install Jupyter. So we're going to say pip install Jupyter. Now, one important thing that I want to make sure, uh, make sure you guys have Java installed. I have Java 11. So make sure you have uh, Java installed on your machine. Now simply start the Jupyter notebook. So you can start uh, learning about Apache Flink uh, table API with me. So you can say Jupyter Notebook and this will, uh, you know, start a server uh, running locally and now simply create or download the notebook that I'm going to give you. And now we're going to explore uh, the uh, Apache Flink table API in detail. So now uh, Apache Flink offers two API, that is a data stream API and the table API. Let's explore the table API uh, in details now. I'll try my best to keep it as simple as I can, right? So um, the important thing here to remember is uh, you got to create a table environment, right? Once you have the table environment, you can create a data frame object. You can select, filter, slice, dice, do whatever you want. Uh, you can either do it in the streaming table environment or the batch table environment, as you can see. Now let's see a very simple example, a hello world example in uh, Apache Flink, right? Over here, if you see, I'm importing uh, table environment, uh, table environment and the uh, environment settings. I am creating a table environment object over here, creating a table environment object, right? Or a batch environment object, however you like to call. After that, I have a list of tuples, right? And I'm creating a table object, table or a data frame. If you are from Spark, you, you would probably call it a data frame. But again, table is what we gotta call. So I'm creating a table. I'm using the table environment dot from elements and this takes a list of tuples which is my data over here and this takes the name of the column after that to print or to see that uh, table on the console you need to invoke execute method on the table and then you can invoke print method after that okay so if i run this cell hopefully uh, here you can see we can see that table on the console right so hopefully that made sense now, the next part that I want to show is just like in Spark, right? You can create a temp view and then you can run SQL queries. You can do this similar approach in uh, Apache Flink as well. So you have this table object, right? Table, right? Over here, we made a table, right? Now, what you can do is you can say table environment dot create temp view and you can give any table name, foo, ABC, whatever you like. And then you basically provide the table object. Now you have an ability to run an SQL query. So now you can see table environment dot execute, just like you say spark dot execute. Uh, you remember you say spark dot SQL dot execute, you, you execute an SQL query. So here I'm doing similar, right? Table environment dot execute SQL and I'm providing the SQL query over here. And then to see the output, I'm using dot print operator. So if you run this, here you can see, uh, we can see that table uh, on the console. So hopefully that is clear. So again, repeating the steps. So the way it works is you create a table environment. Uh, you can create the table environment in either batch or streaming mode. Once you have the table environment, you can create a table object uh, uh, by using a method called from elements, which takes uh, a list of tuples and the name of the columns. 
And then to print on the console, you can invoke execute and print method on the table object. Just like PySpark, you can create temporary view and run SQL queries on that as well. So hopefully, so far, things are making sense for you. Now, uh, again, once we understand this, now let's learn very basics, right? How to select a column, how to filter a column, how to do a group by very basics, right? So now sharing my screen again. So once you have the table object, right, you can select a particular column. Here you can see I'm saying on the, from the table, select the column name and select the column city. And then to print that on the console, I invoke the method execute and print. So now let's try this particular cell. Now this is running and here you can see I see the table on the console or the data frame in Spark. We call it data frame, but here we call it table. Again, same thing at the end of the day. So now how do you filter the data? Uh, you can uh, do so by this particular command. So you can say table. I'm saying, hey, from this table, I would like to select these columns. After that, I want to filter the data on the state where the state is Vermont. And then to print it on the console, I'm invoking execute and print method. So let's run this. So again, all I'm doing is teaching you very basics, right? Okay, how to create a table environment, how to create a table object, how to then filter the data, how to create a temporary view, very basics that I'm teaching you here. So here, what we learned is A, how to select and how to filter. Now let's learn how to do a group by. Similarly, you can say on the table object, you can use dot group by, you can specify the column on which you want to group by, right? So in this case, I'm saying I want to group by on the column state. After that, uh, I'm doing a count, right? So basically, let's run this cell. So this uh, particular cell teaches you how to do a group by. Again, makes sense, very simple example, not taking something complex here, right? Now, uh, in, 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 in Apache uh, Flink, you have a concept of like a sync. Uh, you have a source and you have a sync, right? A source is where you're gonna read the data. Sync is where you're gonna, you know, put the data, right? So here um, you can also, um, you know, create a sync using an, an SQL query. So here I'm saying create table, print sync. Again, if you don't wanna invoke dot uh, execute dot print, you can also use something uh, like this, right? So here I'm using a connector called print. And I'm creating a table uh, called print sync, which has a name, city, and a state. And now what I'm doing is here, if you observe table environment dot execute SQL, insert into print sync, select from the source table. Now, remember up we created a temporary view. So just wanna refresh your memory here. Here, observe. See how we created a temporary view, right? On table environment, we created a temporary view. So there is a table called source table. Now you can run SQL queries on that, right? So now what you're saying is, hey, from this table, insert everything into that print table, which is basically a print statement in, in a nutshell. So if you go down, we made this sync, right? And then all we're doing is you're saying, insert into this particular sync, select everything from the source table, right? If I execute this, here you can see the, the, the data, right? This also works fine, okay? So hopefully that made sense. Now you can also collect data. So just like in, you know, PySpark or Pandas, you know how you iterate over each particular rows. In Pandas, I believe it's iter rows. And in, 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 in PySpark, it is dot collect, I believe. Uh, just like that, you can also do that in, in, in Apache Flink. So you can say uh, table env dot execute SQL. So you might have some SQL query, you can execute that. And then what you can do is you can say with table result, right, dot collect. So you have a method called collect. And then you can iterate over uh, the rows over here. And then you can do whatever transformation or whatever you want to do after that. But you have the ability to, to, to essentially, uh, you know, collect the results um, and then iterate uh, if needed, right? So that's that. Now, one important thing is usually we always, uh, you know, um, as data engineers, uh, you know, we always use pandas a lot, uh, you know. Uh, so if you want to convert the table object to a pandas data frame or from pandas, you want to convert back into a table object, you can do so. So the only thing that you got to do is you got to use a word to underscore pandas and your table object is now converted into a pandas data frame. And then you can do all whatever transformation needed and then you can convert back into a table object, right? So now to convert a pandas data frame into a you know table object so you can use uh, um, uh, as you can see you can use from pandas this takes a pandas data frame right and then here you can see i'm saying table temp dot execute dot print so now my pandas data frame was converted back into a table object 
hopefully this made sense now last but not the least i want to cover a very simple udf uh, udf uh, just like in pyspark you can ap apply a custom function and you know and you can you could define what you want to do in that right so just like that you could also do that in 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 in, in flink uh, and i just wanted to show you how, how to do that right so here i have a particular uh, function which generates uuid again and i want to apply this to my table object right so the way you do that is first you write your python function right once you're done with that uh, then you define a udf as you can see over here and you gotta define the result data type so here i'm saying that the result that you're gonna get back is gonna be a string now it's pretty st similar right so now you can see table dot select you select the columns that you need and now you can call this particular function by using the word call my hash and then i'm just using an alias right so here you can see uh, after that i print the table object on the console uh, and here you can see i was able to um, you know call that particular uh, udf and i uh, i was able to add that as a new column on the on my table right so hopefully that this made sense right now uh, these are uh, pretty basics and if you want to learn more please go to the website where you can find much more details uh, again in this exercise what we have covered is a uh, how to install uh, apache flink uh, python client and then we learned how to uh, create a simple table object how to select how to filter how to group by how to create a temporary view after that uh, we learned how to create a table object to pandas uh, then we learned how to create a pandas data frame back to a table object we learned how to apply a udf now i want you to download this exercise and try it out and that way you will learn the concepts in a much better way thank you so much for watching and maybe in the upcoming video i'll cover the data stream api in a much detail see you guys in the next video